It's the fall of 1990. I had just graduated from high school that summer. It was my first semester in college. And while I was going to college, going to a community college called Holyoke Community College in Western Massachusetts, I was staying with my paternal grandmother. And I was still playing games on a Commodore 64 at that time. But I had my eyes set on a Nintendo Entertainment System, what I'm wearing on my shirt here. Uh, it was a system that I wanted for a long time. When I was living with my mom and I was going to high school, uh, focusing on my studies, I really didn't have the opportunity uh, to work or I didn't take the time to work because I was so focused on school. And living in a single parent household, there was no way we were going to be able to afford to get an NES at any time while I was living there. So for the fall of 1990, when the J.C. Penny wish book came in, uh, I went through and I circled things as my grandmother always encouraged me to do. And there was only one thing that I circled, uh, and it was an NES. That was the only thing I wanted. Uh, after having played NES games at my friend Kevin's house or other people's houses through the latter part of my high school years or career, uh, I didn't have one of my own. And it's really, really what I wanted. So I took it upon myself to give my grandmother this elaborate presentation and explain to her why the NES was the only thing that I really wanted. I know it's very childlike. I know that at that point in my life, uh, there should have been other things that I was looking for or even not even bothering to ask for anything at all. But I really wanted an NES badly. So I put together the presentation. I talked about how my Commodore 64 was four years old and I talked about how the NES was the the newest the newest thing and how there were a lot of arcade games that I used to play uh, at the mall that I could now play on the NES if I had it. It was uh, a rather in-depth but rather silly uh, presentation that lasted about five or six minutes. Uh, and then, you know, I, I closed my case and I waited to see what happened. And the weather got colder. Uh, I finished up my first semester of college. I made the dean's list. Uh, and then it was just a matter of waiting to see what might happen. So fast forward to Christmas Eve, 1990. And I was so curious as to whether I was going to get an NES or not because it was the only thing that I had asked for that I literally spent the whole day in bed. I wanted Christmas Eve to go by so fast I thought if I just tried to sleep the day away that it would show up faster. Uh, again, acting very much like a first or second or third grader, but I, I couldn't help myself. It was the thing that I was most excited about uh, because I'd never had a console for myself. I had played a console at my maternal grandmother's house or I had played consoles at other friends' houses, but really didn't have one of my own. Now, granted, I did have a VIC-20 and a Commodore 64, and those are personal computers, and they certainly did play video games, but the NES was just something different. We were still uh, knee-deep in Nintendo Mania at the time. Uh, Super Mario 3 had just come out. Uh, there were a lot of really good games, I think, available for the NES at the time, and I just I really wanted to have one. So Christmas morning, 1990, rolls around, and as it just so happens, it is now Christmas morning here on the East Coast. It's 12.30 a.m., so I walk downstairs, and my grandmother just has this big grin on her face. She wishes me Merry Christmas. She gives me this big hug and a kiss on the cheek, and she's like, you don't have to eat first. I want you to see what's under the tree. So she gives me this big box, and she didn't want the, uh, she didn't want the suspense to last. And sure enough, it was an NES. I think it was an NES action set, and... There was also a Super Mario Brothers 3 cartridge under the tree. There was a Super C cartridge under the tree. These were games that I had circled in the JCPenney wish book and that I did get. And I was I would have been thrilled with just those. Uh, you get Super Mario Duck Hunt in the action set. You get Super Mario Brothers 3 and you get Super C. That is a great way to start any kind of NES collection and certainly gave me plenty to play for hours if it had just stopped there. But there's one more box under the tree, and in order to talk about this box under the tree and the focus of this final episode of this three-part miniseries called Your Winner, uh, I want to give you a little bit of background as to what living with my paternal grandmother was like. Uh, I had lived with her a few times uh, during my later 
15 years and uh, obviously that first year of college. Uh, my paternal grandmother was basically like a guardian angel type. Um, living with a single mom like I did with a, bro- a younger brother and a younger sister, uh, we didn't do very well for ourselves. My mom was trying to make ends meet with three kids. She couldn't afford a lot of a lot of extras, a lot of luxuries. And my paternal grandmother almost always would come off the bench and help out if there were a pair of shoes that I needed or a jacket I needed or clothes that I needed or if I just needed some money to go to the mall with and play arcade games. She was always the person that would come through for me and help me out and give me a little bit of that life that I wanted but really couldn't have. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so she would always do that. And when I was living with my paternal grandmother, we had pretty much a nightly ritual. Uh, I would come home either from school or from college. Uh, I would kind of relax for a little bit. We would, uh, we would watch the 5.30 news. Uh, Six o'clock, we would have dinner. We would have dinner together. And then at seven o'clock, we would watch two game shows back to back. We would always watch Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy together. Um, she encouraged me to play along, which is how I really got my start playing along with Wheel, and Fortune and Je- uh, Wheel of Fortune and Jeopardy TV shows, which I still do to this day. But it was with her. We always used to watch the shows together. She always used to uh, help me out with answers if I wasn't sure. Uh, she was always uh, a big supporter of mine when it came to knowing just random trivia, and that's really where I got a lot of my knowledge from. So... When I looked under the tree and I saw one more box, I didn't know what it was. These, this was something that I hadn't circled. And as it just so happens, I have a brand new copy of this to open on Unsealed for this very special Christmas episode. It's been something that I've been sitting on since Black Friday. Uh, and now I finally get to open it on Christmas Day as it should be. And that is a copy of Jeopardy! 25th anniversary edition for the NES. Uh, This actually comes in a collector's case. Uh, Obviously, this is really meant more for a collector, but we don't collect on this show. We open things up. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to open the case right now. I feel like I'm on uh, deal or no deal. (coughs) Excuse me. I'm still coughing a little bit. I apologize. So we're going to open this up. And we're going to take the game out. There it is. And the game is still sealed. Trying not to bark into the microphone like I did last time I I filmed. And we're going to open this up in just a minute. So this is the front of the case, Jeopardy 20th Anniversary Edition. This was the newest game of Jeopardy that was available. Uh, This did come out in 1990. So it wasn't like an older version of the game that she had found. Uh, This was the most recent version of the game. And I was super excited to get this. (coughs) Excuse me. So when we look on the back of the box, you can see a couple of screenshots, and I'm going to read what's on the back of the box now. Uh, It says here, for the last quarter of a century, some of the smartest people in the world have been competing for cash prizes on Jeopardy, the high-pressure answers and questions television game show. Now it's your turn. Share the excitement with thousands of TV winners. Test your memory against even more challenging answers in this all-new edition, especially created to commemorate Jeopardy's silver anniversary. You'll be amazed at the things you know, and it plays just like the TV version. And again, you can check out some of the screenshots and things there. Uh, This game was developed by Rare Coinet, who did the first version of Jeopardy, and I believe also uh, a Jeopardy uh, Kids Edition or Youth Edition. Uh, so this is the third installment <coughs> Excuse me, of the game that came out before another company would take over after this. So, um, yeah, we're going to go ahead and we're going to open this up. And, yeah, let's go. Man, this is, this is just like, now I've already taken the Christmas wrapping off, so now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open this up. Oh, gosh. This game has been sealed now for, uh, let's see, 1990. So it's 2018 now, so 10, 28 years. We're going to take the seal off the top there. We're going to try and slip. Maybe I'm not going to be able to slide it off. There we go. Oh, this is so cool. All right. Let's see. Let's And we'll open this up so uh, you can kind of see as I open the top. And the first thing that we have is we have the game cartridge, which is in uh, in plastic, which is always nice. 
There we go. You can see it right there. And we'll go ahead and we'll take it out so you can see it for the first time. There it is. Brand new Jeopardy 20th anniversary, 25th anniversary game. Never been played. Oh, man. And I was just as excited that day, I'll tell you. As a matter of fact, when I opened up all of the presents and then I had some time to play before we would go to my aunt's house that day, um, I hooked up the NES and this was the first game that I played. I didn't play Super C or Super Mario 3 first. This was the first game that I played. And with good reason, uh, because it was something that I wasn't expecting, and it was something that reminded me very much of the person who gave me this very awesome set of gifts, uh, being my uh, paternal grandmother, who I, I miss daily. Uh, she I lost her in 1996 to cancer. Uh, what else do we have in here? We have We have a Nintendo Power ad. Plug into the power. Again, this is from 1990, so we've got a little bit of that <coughs> that late 80s, early 90s tood. Uh, there's a little bit of a map. A little bit of map action shows you how not to get lost in Secret of Zelda, or the Legend of Zelda, I should say. Or some cheats for Blaster Master. Uh, right there. Also, there is a warranty card from Game Tech right here. Free, it says. Register your name and receive advance notice of Game Tech's latest releases. Please take a few moments to complete the software registration form and mail to the address below. <coughs> Sorry. Eventually, this will go away and I will sound normal again. It's kind of annoying that it's not normal. So I apologize for the coughing, but we're almost done here. Uh, so name, age, phone, if 16 years or under, name of parent or guardian. That's pretty interesting. Address, city, state, zip. What is the game title? How do you rate this game? Excellent, very good, good, fair, or poor. If purchased by someone else, age of purchaser, relationship to purchaser, was it a gift? How many other Nintendo game packs are there in your household? Names and ages of other game players in your household. Uh, how did you hear about this game tech product? Where do you purchase most of your hardware, software? And what computer game magazines do you read? Uh, so that's all right there. You could send that in and you would get on their mailing list. They were apparently located in North Miami Beach, Florida. You had to put a stamp on that. That's okay. Also included in the case, in something I'm probably going to put up, uh, is a poster. And I've talked about this before uh, on Twitter, is that we don't get posters included in games anymore. And I'll draw this back a little bit so you can kind of see it. Uh, let's see if I can hold it straight. There we go. So Game Tech, we're into fun and games. And you can see Wheel of Fortune Jeopardy Double Dare. I'd really love to get a new copy of Double Dare and open that up, but those things are crazy expensive. Uh, Wheel of Fortune Junior Edition, Wheel of Fortune, uh, I'm sorry, Jeopardy Junior Edition, and Hollywood Squares, which is also another really fun translation or a conversion of an art of a game show. So the Game Tech poster, I'm man, I'm pretty excited about that. I did not know that was in there. And, of course, we have the instruction manual, which is right here, telling you all about how to play the game. It is in full color, as a lot of Nintendo manuals were back then, talking about daily doubles and how to play the game. Also, the always important safety precautions. Don't wash your cartridge. Don't put it in the laundry. You know, things like that. There's no battery backup here, so you had to keep track of your winnings yourself if you were going to keep statistics, but that's okay. Because playing through the game takes maybe about 15, 20 minutes to play all the way through. It's a lot of fun to play whether you're playing on your own or against uh, human opponents or a human opponent and a computer opponent. Uh, and it's just like the game show. Uh, and that's really all that counts. So, at long last, I get to open up an NES game on camera. I'm very excited about that. Even though my voice is failing me a little bit, it really uh, this had to be done for the holiday, being able to open up a brand new NES game just like I did 28 years ago is pretty, pretty special. Uh, and to my grandmother, who's probably watching me and wondering what the heck I'm doing talking into a microphone on camera, um, thank you very much for everything that you did for me. Um, without you, my video game, my love of video games probably would have died off as a kid because my mom was never into them. And it was my paternal grandmother who was always the one that said, go ahead and play, or if you want this game or that game, we'll see if we can make it happen. She's the one that got me the NES. She's the one that got me the Game Boy while I was in college. Uh, and she got me several other games uh, throughout my childhood. So it, if it wasn't for her, 
Um, I probably wouldn't be the video game fanatic uh, that I continue to be at 46 years of age, soon to be 47 in April. Thanks very much for watching this very special edition of Unsealed. I really do appreciate it. We'll see if we can get another edition or uh, episode or two out before the end of the year. But if we don't, have yourself a happy and safe rest of your holiday season here in 2018. And until the next time, my friends, take care. See you later.